Hello everybody, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this edition of Race Day Spotlight. Today we're going to be heading out to Keystone, Colorado, where we find 13-year-old junior late model driver Brody Moore. Brody, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing wonderful. How are you, Rod? I'm good, man. Can't be any better. I'm talking to you and we're going to be talking some racing over the next 10 to 12 minutes. So uh, tell me what's been going on over the, uh, over the off season. Well, you know, nothing much. We kind of had that coronavirus ban, so we kind of had to stay home. So I had a lot of extra time on my hands. Um, but during that, we did a little online school, which kind of took up your schedule. But during when I wasn't doing school, I was working out, doing some sim racing on the eSports series, which was a lot of fun. The, um, the iRacing has just helped a lot trying to get used to how big the late models are. Right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh coronavirus i mean how do you think you dealt with that from racing being postponed and the dates being kind of pushed back because i know we were all out at madera earlier in the year and we were there for thursday and friday and all amped up to race and all of a sudden rug was pulled out from underneath us and we didn't get a race on saturday so how you been dealing with all that yeah well you know that was kind of a disappointment i was so ready to do that race but sadly it got canceled but I just kind of sat back, relaxed, kind of let stuff play out, and it turned out to be really good. We got to do our first race uh, a week ago, so that was lots of fun. But during the coronavirus ban, like I said earlier, I did a lot of I worked out, tried to keep my schedule going, and just try to stay in shape to get ready for the extreme heat in California. Right. So you're talking about working out. What's one of your workout sessions look like? Well, I don't really like to do, I don't mind doing weights and stuff, but I usually like to go out to the outdoors. Like I, if I had an option to work out inside or outside, I'd pick the outside. So I like to go mountain biking, you know, hiking around, especially got great mountain bike trails, right, right, literally right outside my front door, which is just out, astonishing. So you were talking about uh, school a little bit and you were talking about taking virtual classes during the shutdown. So what's your overall opinion about virtual school? Well, it was kind of nice. I didn't really have that strict of a schedule, kind of get up whenever I want. Um, but it was kind of nice. I didn't, wasn't my favorite, but I didn't get to socialize a lot with my friends, which I, I like to talk a lot. Um, but it, yeah, it definitely wasn't my favorite. We had to coordinate a lot more with my teachers, which I'm not really, I'm used to it because we have to coordinate for racing and stuff. But it was, overall, it was pretty nice. Yeah. Did you have a favorite class that you were taking online? You know, I'd probably have to say it was social studies. I love history. We learned a lot about World War II this, this year, so that was probably one of my favorite classes that I took. Oh, that's cool. I, I, I like history as well. So did you have a class that you weren't really that excited about that you had to take online? Well, you know, I'd probably have to say it was science. I love doing science, but we had to do an online presentation which was a little different than what I'm used to. Um, but it, besides that, it, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I, I'm a, I guess those would have been my two favorite um, courses would have been history and, and science. And now I'm old enough that I could actually be classified as history. So uh, yeah. <laughs> things are a little bit different. Um, so you talked a little bit about the simulator. So talk me through a little bit about how you've been adjusting to the simulator and then how you think what you're learning on the simulator will carry over to the real car. Well, that's a great question. So we got the simulator about two weeks before we started the eSports racing. Um, so we got a little practice, not, not a lot as I'd like to have, but before that we uh, got it all set up. But like your question, we I think it'll transfer over to the real racing, like breaking points, which I thought was very interesting. Having maybe a car or two in front of you it pushes your breaking point back maybe about 10 or 15 feet. Um, but the view of the race car getting used to the width and the length of the car, which is a lot bigger than a Bandolero, obviously. That's right. So let me ask you, when you were simulator racing, did you have a spotter uh, that was spotting for you during the simulation races? Well, we were going to try and get my dad to create an account to do the iRacing, but we just didn't get a chance to do that. So we just used the in-game spotter, which worked pretty well. Yeah. So that may be one thing we'll work on the next time that we go out and, and do a uh, simulation 
uh, series is to get you a spotter so that you can really start to communicate because I think that's one of the biggest things that I see young racers really advance in is that communication with your with your crew and everything like that. So you just mentioned that you just got finished running your first junior late model race there at Madeira. And uh, so let's talk about that race a little bit. Um, how did it kind of go for you? Well, you know, it went really good for our first race practice. The car is absolutely perfect. I had no complaints basically the whole day. We had a little bit of qualifying issues. We had to push start the car, but besides that, we got the car going, did a pretty fast lap time. Um, but then came the race. The race was awesome. The car, once the tires got some heat in them, the car was absolutely amazing. I had no complaints. Then we sadly ran into an electrical issue, which took, which took us out of the race about lap 23, I think. So that was sad, but we started at 13th, I think, and we worked our way up to 8th or 7th place, which I was really happy with for my first race. Yeah, the car, the car definitely had a lot of speed. I watched the race on the... Uh... Um, on the streaming service that Kenny provided and the car definitely was fast and you definitely moved through the field very well and you're right you started 13th and by lap whatever 20 that was you had already worked your way up to eighth place and I'm sure you had a couple more cars out your front windshield that you had on your target list yes so thinking back about your first race there um, what did you really learn from that race? What are you going to be able to learn from that race that you're going to be able to carry over to the next race, which I think is on July 11th for you? Yes, it is. So I kind of got for the first race, I kind of got a taste of how they kind of run things at Madeira Speedway. And I was telling my dad after the race, the driver's meeting was honestly one of the best driver's meeting I've been to in a long time. But uh, back to your question, I think that my first race will carry on to the next one, like I said before, kind of the breaking points um, and getting used to how they run things again. And, and I'm sure just like any young driver that's out there, and I've been you know, a part of that series now for going on four years, there's, a, there's nerves. I don't care how many times you run it. I mean, you are competing with the best young junior late model racers in the country, hands down. And, you know, again, these races are televised on MAV TV. Um, and this particular race was streamed, so it was kind of a double punch there. Um, did you have any nerves going into the race? Well, I, yeah, I did 100%. But I did Newcom, which is actually one of my sponsors. So that kind of calms me down a little bit before I go into the race, so I'm not all jumpy. But, um, yeah, I was definitely a little nervous for my first race, and I'm sure that'll happen almost every race, but I'm sure that'll kind of calm down as I get back into the season. Yeah, definitely. You're going to get uh, every race that you go out there, that's something that's going to is going to happen. Your nerves are going to go down because what happens is your nerves go down because your confidence level goes up. And I tell people yep. all the time that the easiest way to pick up two to three tenths a second uh, out there is, is to have a driver that's very, very confident. Now, you're working with a new team this year. You're working with Charlie Wilson Racing. And can you talk about that relationship and how that's working out so far? Yeah, for sure. So we have a great time at the racetrack. It's a very calm, kind of good laughing environment. We like to throw around some jokes here and then. But as soon as you get to the racetrack, it's all business. Charlie can set up the race car along with my crew chief, Dylan Garner. Absolutely perfect. Um, they listen to me about what I have to say about the car. If it's loose in, loose off, pushing in the middle, push off. It's absolutely amazing how they can work the car. So you've also got a new teammate in Holly Clark. So do you guys work really well together as far as sharing information and how the car's handling and stuff like that uh, during the preparation and during practice? Yeah, for sure. So like during practice, say I go out first or vice versa, I'll come into the track and I'll tell her, hey, the track's really tight or it's really loose from the heat. And then sometimes if we have a little bit of time, we'll go walk the track together, which helps a lot. But we have a very similar driving style, so I think it's a very good match. So looking forward for the 2020 season, are you doing any other racing outside of uh, the junior late model? No, but not. we haven't seen any opportunities that's opened up quite yet, but I think our mo main focus for 2020 is the 5150 Junior Lane Model Series. Well, there you go. If you're a team owner out there and you've got another 
uh, seat open in some type of car. I mean, just listen to how well-spoken and how well-mannered this young man is. And he's a heck of a driver. He proved that in his first race. So let me ask you something, Brody. If you had a crystal ball sitting in front of you right now, it was sitting there, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Well, that's a great question, Rod. I hope to see myself in the next five years maybe doing the SRL, SRL series, racing around the country, maybe getting picked up by one of the top three Toyota or one of the top three de development teams, which would be honestly a dream come true. Okay, Toyota development, if you're, if you're out there, you heard him say, to and then he kind of stopped, but he's talking to you guys. If you're out there watching, check this young man out. Uh, sure. So tell us something about Brody that most people wouldn't know about you. Well, I like to spend a lot of time with my family. I like to go dirt biking. I have a dirt bike, so I like to do a lot of trail riding. I mentioned mountain biking, which is one of my favorite hobbies to do when I'm not racing. Um, I like I have an RC car, which is currently broken, but we're trying to get that fixed up, maybe do a little racing. We have a 18th scale little sprint car, which is a lot of fun to just kind of drive around, but just have fun. So being in Colorado, I mean, you do have access to a lot about different type of outdoor activities. Um, do you do any skiing or snowboarding or anything like that during the winter time? Yeah, for sure. We actually have a sledding hill right outside of my house. So we like to go a little sledding here and then. And we like to go to Arapaho Basin, which is by Black Mountain. And we do a lot of skiing there, which is, I have kind of grew up skiing there. So I know a lot of the runs there, which is really cool. Now, Brody, one of the things that I've noticed being around you and not, haven't been around you that much yet, but we'll be spending some more time as the year goes forward. You look like you have a really special relationship with your dad. Could you talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So my dad, he raced uh, late models at Colorado National. Um, so that kind of carried on. He raced uh, some road course, which kind of did started my career in the go-karts. But he's helped me a lot, gotten me to where I am today. And hopefully you can carry me on a lot more in, into my future. All right. Well, we're just about out of time. Do you want to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? Yeah, I'd like to thank MGF Trucking by My Go Flight, Garage Condos, Storage You Can Own, ANA Topper Sales and Truck Accessories, Lear Truck Caps and Tanas, uh, Amsoil Synthetic Racing Oil, Newcom, and then Charlie Wilson Motorsports, Dylan Garner, my crew chief, Tommy Hurst, my tire guy, and my spotter, my, and also my dad, Alan Moore. Awesome job, man. Uh, I'm, I think the sponsor that I like the, the best out of what you've got is that sponsor, it's talk about storage that you can own. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So we actually run our race shop out of a garage condo um, in Littleton. So it's fairly close to where our house is in Denver, which is we're trying to build a second car, maybe to run at CNS here soon, if the track owner will let us run with the late models. Okay, that's awesome. So there you have it, young Brody Moore out of Colorado, competing in the junior late model series. What I want you to do is to go to BrodyMooreRacing.com, check out his website, go to the fan zone, make sure that you subscribe to his newsletter, um, and just keep following this young man. I think you're going to hear a lot out of him over the next few months as the Junior Late Model Series really starts to ramp up now that the COVID's kind of behind us. And I know that we're going to be running, Brody, we're going to be running, I think, two races per month moving forward. So you're going to get a lot of exposure out there. Thanks so much for being with us. And uh, good luck to you for the rest of the season. And I'm sure we'll have you back on another episode towards the end of the year. Sounds good to me, Rod. Thank you. Okay. Well, everybody, go out this weekend. Have a great 4th of July weekend. I want to make sure that uh, all of you go out and support your local racing tracks. Remember, if you've missed any of our episodes, you can get caught up on demand at raceface.tv. That's raceface.tv. And don't forget to go check out Brody Moore Racing. Connect with him on all of his social medias. And we'll see you back here next week on our next Raceface Spotlight Show. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.